Hey, it's Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? I thought I would just do a more classic unboxing for you guys, keep things kind of simple. I will do a few other things later in the video, but this just arrived. Uh, it is the phone that was announced in terms of West Coast time zone this morning. So once this arrived, I just wanted to jump right into it. Poco X3 NFC. Uh, now you can see that the box might have already been opened, or maybe this was like just hurriedly put together for me, uh, even though it came straight from across the sea. Uh, but I'll still unbox it. I'm actually interested to see what comes in the box with this new Poco device. Always interested in seeing what Poco's up to. I always love the black and yellow colorway here, uh, and it's clearly part of their branding. So let's take a look at the box a little bit. This one always <laughs> makes me chuckle. With easy access to the Google apps you use most. Kind of, uh, kind of hitting it on the nose there, aren't you, Poco? Anyway, one thing that is interesting about this phone is that it's one of the first, if not the first, smartphone to sport the Snapdragon 732G, which is basically the successor to the Snapdragon 730G that we have in the Pixel 4a. And you guys know, I already love that device. So let's see what Poco does with the updated processor. All right, already got ourselves a Poco black and yellow on the boat. Oh, this actually feels kind of substantial. Let's take a look at what's in here. Oh, you know I already love it when this happens. We have ourselves a case included in the box. Poco tends to do this. A lot of Chinese brands uh, tend to do this and I always love it when it's included. Let's take a quick look at it though. This is just, as far as the case is concerned, a nice sort of pliable plastic here. Something simple, but it will give it a nice grip. Look at all of this. Um, sucks that it's folded and like creased up, but I guess I can't do much about that. Uh, we have a bunch of stickers here, so Poco's branding is in full force here. Poco, exactly what you need. This is supposed to be a, an affordable device, uh, given the specifications, uh, but there are some overachieving specs on this phone. Uh, this one's interesting because it's, oh, this one must be like a tattoo of some sort. That's kind of interesting, like a, like a temporary tattoo. And then we have the phone itself, encased in some bubble wrap, which is not popping, but that's okay. Poco X3 NFC, right there, the Snapdragon 732G. This is interesting, a full HD plus 120 hertz display. So even if this is supposed to be a cheaper phone, you're getting a high-end display on here. A 64 megapixel quad camera, and we'll take a look at that camera in a second, and a huge battery, over 5,000 milliamp hours with 33 watt fast charging. That's really awesome. Get that battery nice and topped up real quickly. This camera hump is something else. And look at that branding of the uh, Poco name underneath it, just put sideways like this. This is a unique looking device. There we go. But take a look at this camera hump. There are one, two, three, four cameras there. Of course, the flash is that last part. There's a bit of a symmetry going on here. Uh, that's kind of nice, actually. I like that look. So it's not a perfect circle the way it was on like the Poco F2 Pro, uh, but they find a way to make it look pretty unique here. And going around the other parts of the device, we do have ourselves a headphone jack down here, and that's cool. And yeah, so that's the device. I'm gonna go ahead and put it aside for a second and just take a look at what else is in the box. USB A to C cord, uh, but there is this little orange tint here. Uh, and then we have ourselves the plug adapter, which I would have to, of course, adapt to my plugs here in SoCal. Flat power button, always nice to kind of feel that. And it's gonna be where the fingerprint obviously will be registered. That's how we'll do it. It's quite nice that there's a curve on the back, it's a flat display. Uh, I'm already looking forward to the high refresh rate, obviously, but overall, this is kind of a large phone. Uh, so you're not sacrificing a whole lot of screen real estate for the price that this phone is going to come in at. One thing I will say is that this is a thick device, but that's something we probably would expect with an over 5,000 milliamp hour battery. So I'm gonna give it a bit of a pass there. And that also explains just the sheer heft of the device. Uh, so I'll get logged into my accounts, but I usually just skip all the different setups. I don't copy over apps. I just install apps as I realize I need them on any new device. All right, here we go with the fingerprint. Uh, of course, it's in the power button here, nice flat power button that will then take my fingerprint. Just tappy, 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 tappy. And there we go, we're into it. First thing that always comes to mind is, will this version of MIUI have an app drawer? And the answer is yes. <laughs> so the Poco Launcher uh, does already have uh, uh, an app drawer in most of their phones these days, so it's always nice to see this. But as I'm looking at this display, I'm already enjoying that high refresh rate as I scroll through. The display settings, and I can show you the refresh rate is indeed that 120 hertz. That's an interesting way for them to show off that feature. Uh, but yeah, 60 hertz will save the battery, but 120, uh, uh, 120 
hertz will make it improve picture quality as it says here. Getting this thing already set up, uh, just gonna download a bunch of apps and I will come back in a second with some, maybe some early camera shots and some early thoughts on the experience so far. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get in front of the camera for a little bit on this part because I did use the Poco X3 NFC after getting it set up with a few different games, a few different uh, apps for about an hour after that unboxing that you just watched and I do have a few thoughts. Poco is one of those companies that tries to give you as much of the high-end experience for as low a price as possible. So I'm gonna go ahead and just let the cat out of the bag that the phone is supposed to be under 300 euros. And when you kind of put that into context, there are phones in the US that are starting to get really close to that $300 price point. Things like the Pixel 4a, which is obviously one of the main comparisons that will be made to this phone. After all, it has the lower version, the older version of the Snapdragon 730G, while this one has the Snapdragon 732G. And like the Pixel 4a already proved to us, you shouldn't sleep on this class of processor because for most people, every single day, it's going to provide really good performance. So I dove into Call of Duty Mobile right away to see just how far the G in 732G can go. Now, before I get into that gameplay footage, uh, I will say that there is a cooling system in here, which Poco has made sure to have in many of their devices since the F1. But on top of all of that, you also have MIUI 12's game turbo mode, which I did not turn on, uh, not explicitly at least, uh, when I did the following gameplay footage. What struck me was that I was able to get max frame rate as long as I turned off a couple of other features, in particular anti-aliasing, which uh, smooths out all of the jagged edges in most video games. It's a very common feature to have. Uh, but yeah, I was able to get max frame rate on here, and even if Call of Duty Mobile is not able to go all the way up to the 120 hertz, uh, it's still a really smooth experience. As you can see, going to the highest graphic quality setting means that I had to bring the frame rate down a little bit from the top level which I might actually end up doing later on as I play more of this game. But as you can see, it's already a good looking experience and it, it was smooth the entire time I was playing. And I gotta give this phone a lot of props for achieving this level of performance. The 732G is already proving itself just from the outset. And then you see how Poco put in some premium features around that processor. Things like this uh, high refresh rate screen and a really large battery so you can end up playing for long periods of time in games like Call of Duty Mobile. Of course, there's another layer to this smartphone, and it's the cameras. Now, I'm going to go through the lenses real quick. Uh, we do have a 64 megapixel main camera with a 13 megapixel ultra wide. And then the other two lenses are, and bear with me here, a 2 megapixel macro and a 2 megapixel depth sensor. Uh, the front facing camera is a 20 megapixel uh, shooter that is not capable of 4K video recording. If you've been following the news, you might know that in Southern California, it's been super hot this Labor Day weekend. and uh, when it gets really hot in this area or anywhere in California, usually fires happen. And exactly what's been going on, there's literally a fire happening in that direction, which has caused a lot of ash to fall, which is why I have my anti-pollution mask and then something else over it. Uh, so I could just protect my breathing while I'm getting these camera samples. I do like how the camera app tries to put a lot of options in places that only take a couple of taps. Uh, kind of like opening up the shade and being able to change the video resolution immediately. And then of course there are going to be a ton of different modes on here, including a night mode, a high resolution full 64 megapixel shot mode, uh, and then a few other things that I am interested in trying out later on for my final review. And then finally, there's one interesting thing. First of all, you can go to the pro mode and then make it a pro video mode, which is already pretty cool. Uh, and then I noticed that in the video modes, you can actually use the macro camera to get footage. Again, it's a two megapixel macro though, and that's a little bit of a disappointment because uh, the last Poco device, which is more the higher end one in the F2 Pro, had a five megapixel macro sensor that I actually thought put out some pretty good results. So if you are into macro photography, that one might be the one to go for because this is still just a two megapixel shooter. So I gotta give this phone a lot of props already off the bat because there are many different parts of the spec sheet that most people will be enticed by. There's a headphone jack, the uh, display has high refresh rate, there's a huge battery in here, and as far as the design goes, it is still pretty quintessential Poco. I mean, take a look at the logo here on the side. Um, it just shines really nicely in the shadow gray version that I have, even if the back is very fingerprint prone. And then you have the camera hump here, uh, which is not a perfect circle. It's more of a rectangular one, but they still put that circle there to evoke the same design language from the F2 Pro. And even if this phone is pretty bulky, a lot of stuff I just mentioned off the spec sheet are clear reasons why there's a bit more to this phone than your average. 
Not to mention for a high refresh rate screen, you have a lot of it in a 6.67 inch display, so you have a lot of screen real estate to do things like play Call of Duty Mobile or other games and just enjoy uh, media like from YouTube. Now say what you will about the branding, they are making a big deal that this is an NFC enabled version of the phone, but maybe that is going to be an important thing moving forward as we move into hopefully more contactless payments with Google Pay and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, uh, if NFC is a very specific thing you want in your smartphone, Poco is making sure you know it's part of it in the X3 NFC. And so there you have it, the Poco X3 NFC in this unboxing and first impressions. This phone was literally just announced earlier today and then it arrived, so I thought, you know what? Uh, Poco usually does some interesting stuff, so let's see what they have and I'll give you some first reactions. Of course, like many phones from Xiaomi's sub-brands and even from Xiaomi themselves, it's not going to be available in too many markets, like for example the US, uh, but you can see it in Europe for under that 300 euro price point that I already mentioned. Let me know what you think of the Poco X3 NFC. Uh, are you into this 120Hz refresh rate for such a low price? Uh, and then let me know what you think about the Snapdragon 732G, which was literally just announced not too long ago, and now we have a phone sporting it. Have those discussions in the comment sections down below. At the very least, drop some likes on this video, and then subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. With all of that said, I will call it on this one. Thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and each other, and enjoy your tea, everybody.